So to celebrate St. Patrick's Day, we are going to be building this lovely clover in CSS. Now, first things first, I know this is late. Second of all, I know that some of you are going to say it's easier to use an image or it's easier to use an SVG because it's going to be very quick. I know, but it's just a little bit of fun. We're going to be building this up with pure CSS and uh, hopefully you'll learn something that you didn't know before and uh, you can sort of manipulate this little clover to suit your needs, how you like it. So this is what it looks like. It's actually constructed uh, from three different elements, uh, all having a before and after pseudo element. And you can see it's a shape of a heart. We've covered uh, building a CSS heart before. I think that was for Valentine's Day. So we're going to be doing the same thing, but then we're going to be slightly manipulating it. So the shape of the heart's a little bit skewed and, and not quite a perfect heart shape. And then we're going to be rotating three hearts round so we get this uh, this kind of clover effect. So this is going to work in browsers that support transforms. I'm currently on caniuse.com. Uh, we're going to be using vendor prefixes for Internet Explorer, uh, Safari, which requires it. Chrome back to 31 requires WebKit, so it's going to be in there anyway because it was Safari, but it doesn't really matter too much. Firefox, we've got full support. And obviously for things like Android, it uses WebKit. And we've got uh, iOS Safari, which uses WebKit as well. So this is what we're going to be building. Let's get stuck into the code and get this, uh, get this clover built. So as usual, we're starting out with our document defined. We've got our doc type head body. I've included a style sheet just called app.css in the CSS folder, which currently has nothing in it. So we're doing this from scratch. So uh, really what we want to start with then is this basic heart shape. So I'm going to create a, a div with a class of clover just to house our top left and right pieces or top sort of left bottom, right bottom pieces. And let's first of all just create a leaf element and, and this will be our heart which we can then manipulate and then we can add additional classes to this if we need to. We're eventually going to have three of these, one's going to be top left and uh, one's going to be right. So let's uh, start out with this then. Uh, the first thing then is just to apply some base styles to this wrapper because we are going to be absolutely positioning these leaves. Uh, so I'm going to give this a position of relative so them absolutely positioned elements don't float out of this container. And just for uh, sort of the purposes of this, I'm going to give it a margin of 100 pixels, uh, literally just so it's pushed out the way a little bit so we can work uh, a little bit easier on this. Uh, so the clover element then inside of this, we're going to style up the leaf. Um, now, what we want to do is we want to change the, the transform origin here. Um, and if you head over to at Google and just Google for this, it will give you a lot more information about it. Uh, but we're going to set this to 50 pixels, 50 pixels, and we'll add our vendor prefixes as well. You'll notice um, that if you don't apply a transform origin, your uh, rotated or, or transformed elements will just be all over the place. So we want to settle these in a nice position. So we've got our transform origin. Let's quickly add our vendor prefixes. So we need a WebKit vendor prefix. And as discussed, we need a Microsoft uh, vendor prefix for IE. So um, the before and after pseudo elements are going to apply to all leaves. So we need to say clover leaf. And we're going to apply our before pseudo element. And down here, we'll do the same for after as well. And this will become uh, clear why we're doing this. If you don't know what before and after pseudo element is, it's basically... Um, an element, but it's not physically existing in your markup as a as a piece of written markup. Uh, we do this control this directly from CSS. Uh, so these are going to be a position of absolute. So we can position them where we like. Um, we're going to set the content to nothing because we don't have any content in here. This would usually be for adding text. Um, and we're going to set this to a left of 50 pixels. So that's where the absolute positioning comes into. And we're going to set the top to zero. So uh, the width and the height of these then, let's go ahead and define a, a basic width and a height. You can obviously play around with these if you want to. 
uh, to get different sh uh, sizes and shapes. So I'm going to say a width and a height of, well, 50 pixels and 80 pixels respectively. And let's set our background color now just so we can see what this looks like. So I'm going to say 3D 9C21, which is going to be a nice green color. And let's just preview this in the browser. So we get this uh, sort of square. So it's not much use at the moment. This is actually going to be forming part of our, um, our heart shape. Now there are actually two elements here because we're targeting before and after pseudo elements. Uh, so there's actually another one of these green squares behind this. You can't actually see it. Uh, that'll be uh, the other pseudo element. So what we need to do then is control the border radius so we get that nice round effect on our heart. So we're gonna say border radius, 30 pixels, 20 pixels, zero and zero. So um, these are just sort of top, left, bottom and right. And there we go. So this is the kind of shape we're aiming for. Usually what you would do if you were actually building a heart is you would set these the same because you want that nice rounded thing. Uh, we're going to rotate this away from this in a minute, which means that what's going to happen is, is that it's going to reveal another one of these lumps, which is going to form the top part of the heart. Now that's the reason that we set the transform origin to 50 pixels, 50 pixels, because we're positioning this in, in such a way uh, that we want it to rotate around a certain axis. So, or the origin. So let's now go ahead and just actually rotate this. So we're gonna say transform, and we're gonna rotate this, and we're gonna choose the degrees that we want to rotate it at, and this is gonna be minus 45 degrees. Uh, so let's go ahead and refresh and see what happens. So there we are, we've got our rotated element just there. And we are going to, just now, while we're here, because we can't see the other piece, uh, we're going to target just the after pseudo element here. So what we're going to do is, let's just pull this down a little bit, we're going to do the same thing, we're going to transform and we're going to rotate this instead of rotating it minus 45 we'll rotate it 45 degrees and now we end up with the following so this is looking a little bit better but what we need to do is just say left of zero here and then you'll see that that will pull that over just a little bit like that what we need to do now is set the transform origin on this and this will put it into the right place we'll do the same here for this but we'll change this to 100% and 100% and we have the following so we've now created our nice little heart and it looks all lovely but we're not creating a heart we're creating a clover so while we're at it let's just add in our vendor prefixes so we need one for webkit and we need one for ms for ie and we'll do the same for this as well so webkit and ms and again, the same for these two as well. So let's just pull this down. WebKit and our MS one. And the same for this. So WebKit and MS. Okay, cool. So this is going to be working now in uh, Chrome. Obviously, you can see I'm working in Chrome, Firefox, IE, etc., etc. So now what we want to do then is go ahead and add some more of these heart elements to our uh, container. So let's do this, just duplicate it down. Now we need a way to actually identify these. So I'm gonna just call this left and right for the sake of it. This is just gonna be the bottom left and the bottom right hand uh, side of the clover. When I refresh, you obviously see that nothing has happened because all of these leaves are in the same place. Left and right have no effect because we have no selectors for these. So let's go ahead and add some of these selectors. So we're gonna say clover leaf, and that's with the left class. And we're gonna do something to this. In fact, let's change this one to the right one. And we'll work on that first, and then we'll say leaf.left here. Okay, so for the right hand leaf then, we want to transform this in a way, we want to rotate it. So we're gonna rotate this, and we're gonna rotate this 120 degrees. Let's take a look at what that's done. You can see that it's sort of popping out the right hand side there. Perfect. So let's do exactly the same thing to the left. Uh, but this time what we want to do is we want to just reverse that. So we want to rotate it minus 120 degrees. 
So we've now got this sort of blob, uh, which isn't obviously good enough. It doesn't look at all like a clover. Uh, so we want to translate it. And translating is basically moving an element um, in in a way that you're actually transforming it. You're not actually positioning it differently. You're just tra translating it. Again, you can go ahead and look up at the technicalities of this. So we apply this directly after this. We don't need another transform property. Uh, all of our functions here just go uh, in line. So we're going to do this by 15 pixels on the x-axis and minus 30 pixels on the y-axis. And that gives us the following. So it's just pulled that out just a little bit. So you can see that shape of the uh, clover start to uh, form there. And we'll do the same thing for our left leaf as well. So we'll transform, uh, sorry, translate. And we'll do this by this time minus 15 pixels and minus 30 pixels. Uh, on the y-axis so we get the following shape like this perfect so that is our clover done let's just add our vendor prefixes just down here just to make sure that we are supporting our other browsers so let's add our webkit one in and finally our ms one and that is our clover complete super simple you can go ahead and play around with it if you want different shapes if you want to change the individual characteristics of each leaf you can if you want to make it a little bit bigger you can have a play around obviously this would be useless really in in the ideal world but it's a little bit of fun and, and gives a little bit of uh, css theory here just for fun so that is how we create a clover in css and uh, there we go